Boise River is the home waters to nearly 30% of the entire population of Idaho. Many families, businesses, and farms rely on its clean water as a vital resource. Trout Unlimited has been working with partners to do our part to improve and protect this resource. Every year, the Ted True Blood chapter of Trout Unlimited spearheads many conservation projects in the watershed. This Google Earth presentation focuses on an abandoned mine lands project in the headwaters of the Boise, made possible through a grant from Tiffany and Company Foundation and many others. The following videos provide an overview of our watershed-wide restoration project. So I'm David Olson, I'm the Boise National Forest Public Affairs Officer and feel privileged to be here today at uh, Forest Creek where some great work has been done and here with Pam. Thanks Dave, yeah I'm Pam Harrington with Trout Unlimited and we've been working out here with the Forest Service uh, since 2003 and it's uh, June 2013. Mining was done here up in Idaho City in the 1870s, that was a really long time ago, dredge mining. and. There was really no way for Mother Nature to overcome that. It was too big a, of a project, so we had to actually bring in more heavy equipment and do a little more work on the ground uh, to make a difference to the mine tailings that were just channelizing the stream. All right, and I know that, uh, I think if I remember correctly, we uh, moved some of the uh, bank back to create some floodplains, I think was one thing that was done, right? and then uh, started looking at some of the in-stream structures to be able to start getting some movement of the water and some different scouring and you know, kind of deep and shallow sort of areas. And then just the vegetation, I know the Lucky Peak Nursery uh, that's operated by the Forest Service was very instrumental in working with the volunteers who collected willow clippings and other riparian vegetation and then rooted those and then brought them back to be able to get them planted in this drainage. And you can see the results today. It's just excellent really what's come out of this. You know, Pam, what's uh, amazing to me is the complexity that's been created in what was really a pretty sterile environment. And they're just coming out here now, I see just a variety of butterflies. I saw a warbler come by just a few minutes ago. I know there's red band trout that's uh, in the stream now, which I don't think were there before. And really, uh, just another uh, clear example of uh, the success of this project. Absolutely, you're right. We uh, did some electrofishing just a few years ago. And of course we had to traverse some of the beaver dams because they like our work too. And we overplant for them because they need habitat as well. And they, they create a lot of complexity, let me tell you. <laughs> right. But uh, the electrofishing, we found red band trout of several different age classes, which excellent. is excellent. Yes. And then sculpin, which are one of my favorites. I love those little fish. They might look ugly, but they actually are a great indicator of good water quality as well. Excellent. So yeah, I mean, the, the science is showing it's working. And the photo points, though, really speak for themselves. And we're gonna have some before pictures that we're gonna share because the after is quite dramatic now. Yeah. I couldn't even find the same photo points. I had to really look wow. because it looks so different over time. Yeah. We moved over 60,000 cubic yards of mine tailings in the Moores Creek watershed. That inc includes Grimes Creek as well. We treated over seven miles of stream creating floodplain and put in 250 in-stream structures in the last seven years. The total cost of this project was over $1.6 million.